Right. So again, my name is Ashley. I'm the Volunteer and Outreach Coordinator here at Napa County Resource Conservation District. Um, we are a non-regulatory agency here in Napa County. I see a lot of familiar faces. Many of you have heard this spiel from me or one of our other staff many times. Um, but if you don't know who we are, we, um, we do a lot of different things from vineyard assistance to youth education to volunteer events, river cleanups, biological monitoring, all kinds of stuff. Um, and basically our, our goal is to help you care for the land, water, soil, and wildlife here in Napa County. Um, I do wanna note that as Napa County moves from a shelter at home to purple tier, we are looking at the possibility of opening up some of our volunteer events. I know a lot of folks are really itching to get outside to help our community. Uh, we are still in purple tier, so we do have some restrictions and we'll hopefully have an update about that fairly soon. So keep your eyes and ears open to our Instagram, our Facebook, and also to our newsletter and emails and things like that. Um, and we'll keep you in the loop as much as we can. Um, let's see. If you are not on our email list, feel free to send me um, either in the chat or th uh, send me an email um, and I can get you added to the Napa RCD email list and also to the American Canyon Community and Parks Foundation email list as well if you would like to be added to that. I do wanna recognize our sponsors. Uh, the Wild Series is not something that we do as a one-man show here at Napa RCD. Uh, we rely heavily on our partners. Uh, we work with the Watershed Information and Conservation Council, Friends of the Napa River, who some of you are here today. Thank you for being here today. The Carolyn Parr Nature Center and the Napa Valley Vintners. And tonight's program is brought to you in partnership with the American Canyon Community and Parks Foundation. And we have Janelle, their executive director here today. So I will turn it over to her for a little update real quick. Thanks, Ashley. Hi, everyone. I'm Janelle Selleck um, with uh, ACCPF, as Ashley mentioned, and we're just really excited to be able to partner on a virtual version of WILD. What was WILD AC, which now virtually might as well just be all WILD Napa County, but this is a topic that we were especially excited about being able to participate in it as um, it, because our wetlands are right here in our backyard, and um, anyone who's been out there is the, the tidal influence is very visible, and it's something that we enjoy um, seeing every time we go out. So we're ready to learn, and um, we, we are very grateful to RCD for multiple partnerships, not only this program, but we have a couple other programs I just wanted to mention that are along the lines of um, environmental education and outdoor focus programming. Um, one is a recent um, virtual environmental education program that we've been developing for the past year together. It started out in person and because of COVID, uh, we moved it to become a virtual program. Um, it's called Watershed Explorers, as I mentioned, and it's really available for anyone in the community to learn more about our wetlands. So you can do a Google Earth tour, see a lot of really interesting videos, everything from wetlands restoration to um, plankton and its role in the watershed. So really fascinating, easy to use program um, available for free. So please take advantage of it and use it. Um, we also have two programs coming up related to outdoors and nature art. We have a Curiosity Kids, which is a virtual um, program for children specifically. The very short, short snippets of videos that encourage kids to get outside um, and in this case, learn to how to do some nature art. So they're really fun for the kids to watch. And one of our staff produces them in partnership or actually with the help of her very own daughter. So they're a lot of fun. And then finally, our park and play is coming up on February 6th, which is next Saturday. Um, and we'll, um, RCD will be there. We're actually handing out nature art kits. Um, so everything you'll need to be able to go home, um, create a little piece of nature art and leave it out on the trail or keep it for yourself. So again, we're just really grateful for our partnership with RCD and everything they do for the community. Uh, we look forward to hearing what Aaron has to say tonight about tides. And um, Andrea dropped all of the information on our programs in the chat box. So feel free to check us out at acparks.org. Thank you. Thanks, Janelle. Um, as Janelle mentioned, we work a lot with American Canyon um, and having the partnership with the American Canyon Community and Parks Foundation has been just a really wonderful experience for Napa RCD and also, you know, all the residents that live in, Napa, in um, American Canyon. So we're really grateful to have you all with us. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and introduce tonight's speaker. Uh, our speaker is Erin uh, Blackwood. She's with the Estuary and Ocean Science Center at the University of San Francisco. She's a fourth generation Californian. Um, she got her uh, bachelor's degree at UC Santa Cruz in marine biology. And then uh, we just learned that we went to the same uh, 
graduate school um, in Western Washington. Uh, and then Erin has been here in, um, in the Bay Area since 1997. So she enjoys exploring the coast at low tide, watching for whales and all those wonderful things that uh, the Bay Area has to offer. So at this point, I will go ahead and ask Erin to share her screen and take it away. All right. Thank you. Um, it's great to, to see everyone. This looks like a great group. A lot of folks that I don't know yet. So this is great. Um, okay, now I'm going to need to make sure I share the correct screen. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. You got it. All right. That's what we wanted. We did it. We did it. Uh, yes. Yeah, so here, <laughs> here's my title. Tides. What are they? What do they mean to you? Um, thanks for the great introduction, Ashley. As uh, I'd forgotten that I had all that stuff online, so it's good that I did. Um, and so, forgive me if I kind of uh, looking away from the camera. I'm, I have another screen over here. I'm looking at, it. and also forgive me in advance. Uh, I have a little dog, and he's behaving himself right now. And hopefully, he'll stay that way for the duration of the program. <laughs> he might, you might, might do a photo bomb at some point. Um, all right, so. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be here and give, give this presentation on Tide. So um, we just have to get it to go to the next slide. Sometimes there's a delay, but no, the delay is not happening. Are you using the arrow key on your keyboard or are you trying to click? Uh, I'm trying both things. Oh, goody. <laughs> so, so <laughs> here we Let's thought we see. had this all worked out. So when you, oh, okay. um, here, I found, I found my mouse. Let's see if that is going to do it. There we go. Okay. There we go. Perfect. You guys all see yeah, it? Okay. Got it. Sorry about that. All right. We've got it now. Um, so, um, this would be um, any guesses, low tide or, or high tide? This is kind of hard to have an interactive program on Zoom, isn't it? Um, feel free to unmute yourself if you want to just say, what do you think that's low tide or high tide? Low tide. Low tide, yes. Um, and this is, um, this is, the next picture is high tide. So this is the Bay of Fundy. Uh, over on the East Coast, and there the range in the between high tide and low tide can be 15 meters or 50 feet. And when the water is coming in or rising uh, to high tide, it rises one meter or 3.3 feet in 23 minutes. So pretty fast. So um, that's just a picture of what things can look like between low tide and high tide. Uh, and I promise there will not be any math in this presentation, even though there can be a lot of math in talking about tides. We currently don't have a physical oceanographer at San Francisco State University. So if you do have questions about the math, I might have to find uh, another physical oceanographer for you to refer to, because um, I do not have the math knowledge uh, uh, behind all these tides. But they are the longest of all ocean waves. Um, there are periodic short-term changes in the height of the ocean surface at a particular place. The wavelength of tides, um, it's why they're the longest of all ocean waves, it's half the circumference of the earth. Uh, and they can be caused by gravity from the sun, uh, sun and the moon, the motion of the earth and inertia of water. And they're known as a forced wave. Um, so here's some uh, pictures. This is called the equilibrium theory of tides, uh, which is only really half of the explanation of tides. I'll get into the rest of it in just a moment. Um, so the first picture you see, if the planet is not moving, gravity will pull it into the sun. Um, and in, in, in B, if the planet is moving, the inertia of the planet will keep it going in a straight line. But uh, in reality, you'll have both um, gravity and inertia causing the planet to travel in a fixed path around the sun. Now this shows it a round orbit. And of course, in reality, the Earth's orbit around the sun, as well as the moon's orbit around the Earth are both elliptical. So they're more of an oval shape, not a round orbit around the moon. <clears throat> uh, and so here you, we kind of put the picture together. The moon um, attracts the, the water on the surface of the ocean, um, the, the gravity of the moon. Now uh, it actually attracts the, the center of mass of the earth. It's not the center of the earth. It's the center of mass is a little bit, not quite at the center of the earth. 
but the Earth's motion creates a, an opposite bulge in the water on the other side. And so the combined result is this bulge on both sides of the Earth. And so here's a, another picture of it. So here we have um, the kind of a low tide, the island, this island here 